Hey guys, so today we're going to do an interesting string problem and we're going to try and determine, write a function to determine whether two strings are anagrams or not. And so this is a pretty straightforward problem. We should go ahead and get started by asking any questions we have of our interviewer. And the big question that comes to mind is what characters are we actually using in this problem? So we could be using just the 26 English characters and not worrying about capitals or lower cases. We could be using the entire ASCII alphabet. We could be using like two or two byte Unicode or something like that, which would be a different character set. And so we need to know what we're dealing with here so that we can deal with it properly. And this is also a really good thing to know for your interviewer to see that you're thinking about this when you're writing code because a big thing these days is internationalization at companies. So writing your code so that it can work with, you know, the standard Western alphabet, but can also work with other alphabets like Chinese or Japanese or Arabic or all of these different character sets. So it's good for them. It's good to show them that you're thinking about this. So in this case, we're just going to imagine that we're using the character, any possible character that could be represented by a standard char in Java. So that's going to be an, a single byte or 256 possible characters. And so we're just going to use that in this case, but you should ask your interview about that. And we also want to ask, you know, are we worrying about things like capitalization in the words? Like, it makes a big difference because we don't know whether we want to, whether a word is, if a word is, for example, like banana all capitalized and banana all lowercase, are those anagrams of each other? Are they, I mean, they're the same word, but are they, are we counting them because they're capital characters versus lowercase characters? So we need to confirm with our interviewer what it is that they expect from us. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to say that we're only going to worry about lowercase characters and we're not, and we're going to allow any characters, but on, we're going to allow any characters within the 256 bit or 256 set of characters that could be represented by a char, but we're going to treat all alphanumer alphanumeric characters as lowercase. So we're not going to worry. So in this case here, they would be the same. They would be anagrams of each other. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to create an array and we're going to use that array to count the number of occurrences of each different character. So since we have a fixed set of characters that we can choose from, we can just use a 256 item long array and that's all we really need to do because we can go through our string one character at a time and we'll just increment the item in the array for that particular character so that the index of that character in the array will get incremented. And so we'll, we're going to go through the first string and do that. And then we need to compare the second string. And a really easy way to do that is just go through the second string and subtract from our same array. And then in the end, we're going to go through the array and we're going to check that all the values are zero. And if all the values are zero, then we know that we have the same characters in both. But if all the values are not zero, then we know that there was some difference. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'm just going to create a, we're going to return a Boolean and I'm going to call it is anagram. And we're going to take in two strings. We're going to just take in a string s1 and a string s2 like that. And now there are a couple easy checks we can do up front, or there's one easy check that we can do up front to see whether the two words are an anagram or not. And that's whether or not they're the same length, because if they're not the same length, then they can't be anagrammed because they have a different number of characters in them. So we're just going to go ahead and check if s1 dot length is not equal to s2 dot length, then we can go ahead and return false. And now I said before that we're not going to worry about whether if if the cases are different, that is still an anagram. So I'm just going to go ahead and convert both strings to lowercase because then we don't have to worry about it and it's just going to make our lives a little easier. So in Java, that's going to be S1.2 lowercase. 
And if you don't remember what the exact syntax is for how to convert it to lowercase, it's not a big deal. You can actually ask your interviewer or just say like, hey, I don't remember exactly what the syntax is for this, but I'm just gonna, I think it's something like this. So I'm just gonna put that, or maybe they'll even tell you, like if you have a nice interviewer, they'll supply that information and they know that you know that that function exists and it doesn't matter that you don't remember the syntax because you know it, you could just look it up if you're actually writing code. So it's not really a big deal. And in this case, this is what it is in Java, but it's not something that you need to stress out about. And then we're gonna create our array and it's gonna be an array of integers. So obviously we're assuming that our word has some reasonable number of characters because you could imagine this case where it has uh, more A's in it than can fit in an integer so it would overflow and then maybe we should use a long but we're going to assume that our string is within a reasonable length where that's not going to happen. But you know mentioning that to your interviewer could be good to show that you're thinking about that sort of thing. And I'm going to call it letters because that's what it is. <laughs> and then I'm going to create a new int array and I want it to be 56 bytes long or it's 56 elements long and I'm going to represent that like this. I'm going to it's a one shifted over eight and that I kind of like this because it sort of shows that it's it makes it clear that it's representing one byte but you could also just put 256 it's the same value and it really doesn't matter I just think that you know looks a little clearer and it's really personal preference. And now we're going to go through the first string. And so we're going to do for char c. And sadly, in Java, we can't iterate through a string. So we're going to have to convert it to an array. And now we're just going to go through and we're going to say letters c plus plus. And hopefully it's clear what I'm doing here. I'm just going through the array and I'm using the index of because the character is basically a byte, right? It's a, you know, it's interchangeable with a byte uh, primitive type in Java. So I'm just using it as a uh, numeric value as a index in this array. And so that just makes it super simple. I'm now going to go through the next string and remember we're going to subtract this time. So I'm going to do for char c in s2 dot to char array. And here I'm going to do letters c and I do minus minus because I'm subtracting and minus minus. And finally now I need to go through and check. Right, so I'm just going to do for int i in letters. And all I need to do is check whether they're 0 or not. So if it's not equal to 0, so if i is not equal to 0, then I'm going to return false. And otherwise, we know that it's an anagram, so I'm going to return true. And that is all there is to it. So let's go ahead and test. So let's take you know we can take a couple of simple examples so I'm gonna say is anagram I'm gonna try for example the two empty strings first just to make sure that that works and as we can see if string length of s dot length is not equal to s2 dot length we return false but they are equal in length we convert them both to lowercase which doesn't do anything we create this array we go through this zero times we go through this zero times and now we know that all of them are initialized to zero and none of them were changed so we're not going to return false because they're all still going to be equal to zero so we're going to return true and now let's try something like abb and this one can call be bab for example and i'm going to keep uh no we can just keep track of the arrays in our heads because it'll be a little too much to write out but we're going to go in here we're going to they are the same length we're going to convert them both to lowercase, which they already are, but it will make sure that they're all lowercase. And we're going to initialize our array. And now here we increment b by we increment a by one and b by two in this first loop. 
And now in this second loop, we're going to go through again and we're going to increment, we're going to decrement a by one and b by two. So we just increment and then we decrement them the same amount. And that's what we expect. And now when we go through our last loop, they're all going to be zero the way we expect and we're going to return true. And finally, let's try one more example where they're not the same. So we'll just do that. And actually, I'm going to leave them so they're the same length. So in this case, they are the same length. We're going to convert them both to lowercase. And we're going to create our array. And we're going to go through. And now we're going to increment a by 1 and b by 3. And in our second one, we're going to decrement a by 2 and b by 2. right? So now a is negative 1 and b is plus 1. So when we go through our array of letters and check if they're all zero, now we have two that are non-zero. So that's going to return false. And that should make sense. And you can test. It would be good if you have time to test additional cases. You can test cases with capitalization. You can test cases where they're different length. You know, give it, it's really just to get a good sense and to show to your interviewer that you're fairly confident and competent and just sure that you have the right answer. So. That's pretty much it. We just want to double check what the runtime is of this algorithm. And it's a little bit maybe inefficient because we're going through the string multiple the strings multiple times, but it's not that inefficient. So we're going through the first string once, we're going through the second string once, and then we're going through our array of letters once. So this part is going through the array of letters is always the same, so that's constant going through the string, it's going to be proportional to the length of the sum of the two strings, which is basically the same. So in the end, we basically have the, we have big O of M plus N, because we're going through both of the strings once. And so, I mean, you could also, this is, I mean, this is a linear time. We could just represent it as M of N, where N is the length of the first string plus the length of the second string. Fairly efficient, fairly simple, fairly straightforward, and hopefully that made sense to you, and I will see you again on Friday.